Good fucking God. I hated Strange World so fucking much. It is one of the worst animated movies I have ever seen in my life. I can't believe Disney decided to follow up Encanto with this trite, safe, corporate friendly, agonizingly generic piece of hot garbage. Devoid of any charm, nor wit, nor any sort of entertainment. It is completely empty. And considering on how 2022 is one of the worst years of animation, are you even surprised? Like, at all. Because I'm clearly not. At least Pixar's two movies they released that year, each of them had somewhat of a personality, even though they were both pretty much average. Strange World, on the other hand, is empty and lifeless. The only worth that it has is through the animation. That's it. Outside of that, it is absolutely worthless. Devoid of anything worth talking about, nor remembering. The only reason people are talking about it is when they're making fun of Disney for treating it like shit in the marketing department. Without it, I don't see anybody talking about this empty ass Disney product. The script is so basic and generic with its lost world plot that you can literally predict everything that's gonna happen once they enter the titular location. There are no surprises whatsoever, which is ironic considering that this movie has a twist ending which we will get to later. The movie's theme of generational trauma is literally the exact same as Encanto's, but all of its subtlety and nuance is completely thrown in the garbage in favor of shoving it all over your face. Oh, wow. Look at these three generations putting aside their differences and overcoming their trauma. Isn't that just a daring? No. It doesn't have any extra layers of brilliance to its message, nor any compelling themes attached to it. It is literally just three generations fighting each other because one likes farming and two like exploring. That's it. It has no intrigue, no subtlety, no authenticity, nothing. Absolutely nothing. Another reason why the message doesn't work is because all the clades are incredibly flat and boring characters that don't do anything that live up to much better animated families. For example, the Mitchells in Mitchells vs. the Machines each have a distinct personality to them. Katie is a quirky and pretentious film lover. Rick is a kind and loving yet cowardly nature lover. Aaron is a dino geek who lacks social skills. And Linda is cheerful and enthusiastic about everything despite her repressed rage. Same can be said about the Madri Gals. Mirabelle is kind and empathetic and courageous. Bruno is an awkward goofball with a deep love for his family. And both Isabella and Luisa struggle to act flawless despite all the pressure Alma has on them. The Clades? Uh, Searcher is a cowardly farmer, Meridian is a sassy pilot, and Ethan is gay. Wow, these guys sound great. Never seen these cliché tropes before, ever. There's no way in the world that we can paint them in a negative light. But you want to know who we can paint in a negative light? These two! With the former being incredibly useless, and the latter being one of the worst characters in Disney history. Jaeger Clade is intolerable, and that's basically because he's the worst father in a Disney movie since Buck Cluck from Chicken Little. He's an obnoxious narcissist that prioritizes exploring over absolutely everything else. The movie literally starts with Jaeger abandoning his son just so he can go exploring beyond the mountains. I'm not kidding. And when they reunite 25 years later, he doesn't even apologize! Instead, he keeps trying to justify his shitty actions to Searcher. What's even worse is that he doesn't even care that Avalonia's power source is dying. He's still obsessed with seeing what's beyond those stupid ass mountains. This guy literally threw his entire life away just because he likes exploring. Fuck you, Jaeger. I hope you decide to go sailing one day and get eaten by a shark. As for Callisto Mal, She's the most useless character in the whole film. I mean, she convinces Searcher to come with her on the mission, but after that, she contributes absolutely nothing to the plot until the last 20 minutes. Oh, and don't even get me started on that, because with her, they pull the exact same bullshit as Luck did. Yup. In the climax, she's revealed to be a twist villain, but then she literally changes her mind five minutes later. Seriously. You make Zerg from Lightyear look like Lotso from Toy Story 3. On top of that, the only things Callisto does that are quote-unquote villainous is that she locks the clades up in a closet and tries to exterminate all the creatures eating Pando's heart. The twist also doesn't work because she doesn't even act villainous or antagonistic at all. When she turns on the clades, she just acts completely ignorant of their revelation of the heart in the creatures. 
It just feels like something the writers just shoehorned in there because they realized they had nothing for her to do and that the audience would probably expect her to be a twist villain anyway. And with Callisto changing her mind after learning that the heart is an actual heart and realizing, oh wait, maybe killing these creatures isn't a good idea after all. It basically makes the twist completely pointless. Jesus Christ, Disney, either you commit to this tired trope that you're blatantly obsessed with or you don't. Because you know what? I think I would have preferred her as a twist villain, because at least she would contribute something to the plot, but instead, she does absolutely nothing of relevance whatsoever. The entire third act is embarrassing. Searcher and Ethan learn that Avalonia is a giant turtle, then Jaeger abandons his son again. Then there's the pointless twist villain bullshit, and then Searcher tries to break through the pando to save the heart, but oh no, he broke his favorite staff! And what happens then? He just gives up. Dude, you can still use the shovel blade and there's absolutely nothing stopping you right now. Are you fucking kidding me? And then Jaeger comes in to help save the heart, not because he cares about his son, nor Avalonia, but because the plot demands him to. Not to mention that the reconciliation between them doesn't feel earned at all. What else is there to talk about? Um, all Legend does is window dress and make people say, Uh huh, what a cute little doggy. Any cute with his wee little wigs? That it is so cute, therefore it's a great movie. None of the jokes were funny and incredibly lame, and they all feel like something out of an MCU Marvel movie. From Phase 4! Ethan being gay adds nothing to the story, plus the fact that we don't know his crush's name, who he is, or why Ethan likes him, or anything! And it all merely just exists so that the movie can pander to the woke crowd. The film's poor advertising just sums up his quality perfectly. It's a corporate, empty, trite, woke product that tries desperately hard to copy themes of much more successful films, and it all just crashed and burned as a result. I genuinely felt nothing watching Strange World in theaters. Nothing about it was entertaining, every aspect outside of the animation was subpar, and I left the theater more and more infuriated. The fact that this is the first Disney movie with their new logo and that it was released a year after Encanto is just laughable. Ice Age Adventures of Buck Wild is still a worse movie, but if we're only counting theatrical animated films, Strange World would have won the award as the worst animated movie of 2022, and I am proud to give this corporate husk of a Disney movie a 2 out of 10. And Disney, please do better with your next movie.